so this is a 28 year old pregnant female at 29 gestational week who uh, presented with severe right flank pain all right uh, i am provided with the um, ultrasound grayscale images uh, at the level of the right uh, kidney where i can appreciate that there is a heterogeneous area um, uh, which is uh, uh, hyperechoic and with internal hypoechoic areas as well uh, in the right lumbar region. Um, my, um, uh, on the other images, I can appreciate the size of this lesion with, uh, to be 6 into 5 into 16 centimeter. And uh, it has. Um, uh, on the third image, I think I can appreciate that the right kidney is um, somewhat irregular with the, and is surrounded by a quick collection. And the uh, kidney shows uh, um, uh, loss of gray white matter, uh, loss of uh, corticomedial differentiation and irregularity, uh, suggesting some uh, element of uh, renal parenchymal disease. Um, and the uh, surrounding the um, hypoquic area surrounding the kidney contains some internal echogenic uh, component as well with the um, ir irregularity of the uh, renal outline um, uh, as the patient has presented with the severe pain on the right side um, i am in a pregnant female all right uh, back to the history mm -hmm. Right flank, right lumbar region pain in a uh, 29 weeks gestation. She had history of fever as well. Yeah, so I'm thinking about some uh, infectious and infectious uh, inflammatory uh, process going on in the right kidney. So uh, with the so uh, keeping in view the findings, my uh, differentials include the pyelonephritis or a perinephric abscess in the patient. Uh, Excellent. So, uh, which also favor, uh, correspond with the history of fever. Um, so I would like to uh, consider the uh, treatment of this infectious process in form of antibiotics should be considered and then rescanning should be done to see the uh, improvement. Okay, excellent. So at this point, yes, uh, with the history, flank pain, uh, as we know, pregnant lady uh, has increased risk of developing UTI. So this patient presented with severe right flank pain. We can see here that the kidney show heterogeneous area of uh, hyper and hypoechoic and area of perinephric hypoechoic collection with internal echoes. Uh, a very important uh, negative is that you can see here, this is the hilum. There is no uh, hydronephrosis to suggest an obstructive uropathy. Yeah, yeah, no hyper. So if we see pyelonephritis, we need to know is it obstructed, obstructive pyelonephritis or not because the management is uh, different. Uh, and obstructive, uh, obstructive uh, uropathy with pyelonephritis is a urological emergency. So here we can see this is a pyelonephritis with perinephric abscess and no hydronephrosis. So the patient, uh, excellent, so this is the diagnosis. Uh, the patient received treatment for this infection and uh, she was admitted, uh, however, Two weeks back, she presented to the ER with, again, uh, fever and right flank pain. Uh, two weeks later from this first two image. Weeks later, yes. Yeah. So now I can see that in the ultrasound images, uh, the kidney is a uh, right kidney appears to be bulky uh, as compared to the left and uh, globular in shape uh, with the um, Again, I can see that the cortex is thickened and there is some heterogeneity within the cortex. Uh, and uh, now I can see that there is some element of um, hydronephrosis as well uh, in the kidney. And on the Doppler scan of the right kidney, I can see that um, I can see that uh, there is a loss of uh, internal vascularity of the right kidney. Uh, all, uh, however, the left kidney is normal. Uh, uh, Okay. Uh, right. Um, uh, no, on the Doppler, 
Okay, sir, ma'am, uh, is the both kidneys stop your right kidney? Both kidneys are Doppler for the right kidney. Right. Actually, okay. and the same time, also the patient did CT. So the CT are more uh, informative. So this is the CT. Although the patient was pregnant, they took a high risk consent and did CT because the patient was very sick, ill with severe flank pain. Uh, so I can see that the, now the kidney, uh, there's some a description of the outline of the kidneys with perinephric fluid and a uh, high echogenicity contents within it. And um, the outline of the kidney is not, uh, appears to be uh, disrupted and there is some hypoechoic area within the renal parenchyma. Um, and some, I can also appreciate a focus of uh, in the lateral aspect of the renal uh, right uh, kidney, right renal parenchyma on the first axial image. Um, yeah, this one. Uh, so now I am thinking about uh, uh, um, Some uh, pregnancy associated, uh, 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 it can be some uh, because the renal parenchyma part of the renal parenchyma is not enhancing and it's mostly the cortical uh, area. So, uh, okay. it can be some uh, cortical necrosis element of cortical ne ne uh, necrosis in this. And what do you do? What do you think of this? Uh, what uh, I couldn't understand what you said. So what do you think about this perinephric heterogeneous hyperdense? The perinephric area shows some uh, irregularity and chart trending and uh, it's like a collection or an abscess. Okay, what about this foci? This high intensity focus, so I'm thinking about some uh, uh, vascular abnormalities, some uh, aneurysm or active bleed in this region. Okay, excellent. So, if you're thinking that this could be a small pseudoaneurysm and aneurysm or active bleed, what do you think this hyperdense perinephric? Because here in the axial, you can see this is the renal cortex. Hematoma, hematoma, hemorrhage, okay. perinephric hemorrhage, subcapsular region. Okay, so. What are the differential diagnoses of renal parenchymal pseudoaneurysms and perinephric hematoma? Renal parenchymal pseudoaneurysms. Renal What are the causes? Any? What could cause perinephric hematoma? Vasculitis. Uh, vasculitis. Any vasculitis yeah. type in particular? Uh, poly, polyarthritis nodosa. Yeah. Excellent. So this is one differential. One of the causes is vasculitis. Yeah. Other causes? Mm, other causes? Uh, um, uh, renal artery. Uh, I'm thinking of fibromuscular, but does, it does not cause aneurysms. It causes uh, a strict string of the renal vessels. Yeah. And, um, uh, no. Uh, aneurysms can be traumatic. Excellent. Traumatic if there is history of trauma or iatrogenic yeah. if there is history of biopsy. Yeah. Or... Yes, history. Um, pregnancy uh, induced. I am um, unsure if there's any cause related to pregnancy in this uh, formation of aneurysms. How about the images of uh, the polynephritis? Could polynephritis cause good aneurysms? I'm not sure about that. Okay, so excellent. Uh, what's your next step in this case? Okay, I would like to uh, do some um, you know, renal, uh, look, look at the renal vessels, uh, the aneurysms. So I would like to perform the renal art uh, to, from, to look at the branches, the site of aneurysm, the, extent, the size of aneurysm and all. Mm -hmm. And? Uh, so the next study would be renal uh, uh, arteriogram. So what would be your next step? 
How would you management management would be include embolization of the aneurysm? Yes. So excellent. Good job. So this case uh, initially presented to us with this appearance, the uh, this appearance, city appearance with severe flank pain and perinephric hematoma with areas of pseudoaneurysms. Uh, initially, the differential diagnosis of uh, perinephric hematoma and pseudoaneurysms include uh, vasculitis, uh, uh, syndosa, post-infectious or pyelonephritis is one of the causes, uh, traumatic or uh, drug abuse such as amphetamine abuse or speed kidney. Uh, by exclusion, this patient had no history of trauma and she is not a drug abuser. Um, vasculitis versus post-infection. At this point, you need to assess the um, uh, other visceral, visceral arteries. So this is your checkpoint or checklist. So we'd mentioned I'd like to check the contralateral kidney if it's involved or spared. Uh, I'd like to, to assess the other visceral, visceral organs. So uh, vasculitis usually will have more than one vessel involvement. So mm -hmm. if it is involving bilateral kidneys or if it's involving the right kidney and uh, the other visceral arteries, hepatic artery, mesentric arteries, then you would favor vasculitis. All right. Right? Uh, however, if it is isolate, isolated into one kidney, and then I'll uh, assess uh, or check with the patient history if had any previous polynephritis, which we know that the patient had uh, polynephritis and renal abscess. Uh, so, uh, at this point, I would ask the patient if she did any drainage for that abscess, could be iatrogenic. If not, and managed conservatively, then this could be a post-infectious uh, renal uh, pseudoaneurysms and perinephric hematoma. Next step, so most, our, my most likely diagnosis is uh, uh, post uh, palynephritis complicated by uh, pseudoaneurysms and perinephric hematoma. Next step would be, I would correlate with the patient's hemoglobin level to know if this hematoma is actively bleeding or not. If uh, next, if the patient clinical status, if the patient is uh, stable or not stable, right? Because management depends on the patient. So if dropping hemoglobin, then we need to refer for IR immediately for embolization. Uh, if she's unstable, they might take her for OR. Uh, this patient was borderline stable. She was stable, but dropping hemoglobin. They took her for uh, IR and did embolization of uh, these uh, small pseudoaneurysms. And now the patient and the baby are both fine and uh, healthy. All right. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, Ma'am, there are a few questions regarding this case. The first question is uh, in the images provided. Uh, is this planning artery normal or not? Is what? Is this, I'm sorry. Is this planning artery uh, normal or not? In the images? Uh, it's normal. This is the splenic uh, vein, not the artery. But the splenic oh. artery was normal. Okay. Another question is that uh, could ruptured uh, AML could be a cause of uh, this picture? Can we keep AML and this, the, uh, the differentials? Yes. So excellent question. So if I if I brought you the case, starting from this image, so I brought the case uh, from infection to hematoma. If this was your initial study, and we don't have previous scan showing that the kidney has no AML, then yes, it would be a very excellent differential diagnosis and actually one of the top differential diagnoses. So uh, if this was your first study, then I would say that uh, there is perinephric hematoma for five pseudoaneurysms or active bleeding that I would confirm by other phases. Uh, so if this is venous, I would do delayed. If it's fixed, small, same size, then it's pseudoaneurysm. If it is pooling, then it's actively bleeding. And uh, the differential diagnosis of perinephric hematoma would include the ruptured AML, which is the most common cause. Uh, and sometimes we don't see the mass itself, the AML itself. We see the hematoma only. Uh, the other differential diagnosis would be iatrogenic perinephric hematoma, traumatic, uh, vasculitis. Uh, very rarely RCC can 
cause perinephric hematoma, but this patient is young. So it's not in the differential diagnosis. And uh, next step would be to correlate with the previous images of the patient. Uh, but in this case, if we look back to the uh, earlier images, the patient didn't have any uh, renal masses. So she had only, uh, this was the right kidney. There was no masses, only infection and polynephritis. Okay, ma'am. There's another question that, uh, is it pregnancy-induced or infection-induced in this patient? In this patient, um, giving the patient is pregnant, she had increased risk of developing UTI. And UTI complicated by polynephritis. Uh, so the risk of the polynephritis is the pregnancy. However, the pseudoaneurysms and the hematoma, no. It's just a complication, a rare complication of uh, infection. Any patient with severe bad uh, polynephritis could develop pseudoaneurysms. Uh, same idea as mycotic pseudoaneurysms. So these uh, small pseudoaneurysms in the... These small pseudoaneurysms are mycotic aneurysms from the previous uh, polynephritis and abscess. See, this is the CT, the initial CT. So we can see that the kidney is enlarged. There are multiple peripheral linear hypodensities. So this is very typical for abscess, renal uh, polynephritis with abscess without any AML. So, uh, sorry. I don't see aneurysm in this case. This case, this is the, the, this is the same case. So this is the CT showing the abscesses and polynephritis. And then two weeks later, she presented with this mycotic aneurysm and perinephric hematoma. Okay, ma'am, there's another question that, uh, um, can we call it a simple uh, collection or abscess rather than calling it a hematoma? Um, Okay, so if we see the density, it's too dense for collection. Collection usually is hypodense fluid with significant surrounding fat stranding. This is hyperdense, it's higher than the muscle. So it's too dense for abscess. Okay, ma'am. There is another question that, uh, um, sorry, can we. Uh, we don't see aneurysm in, on the ultrasound. Well, the ultrasound is uh, sensitive but not specific. So maybe it's technician dependent, or maybe because of the heterogeneous perinephric hematoma, we couldn't see these small pseudoaneurysms at the periphery of the lesion. Come on. Uh, there is another question is what would we uh, what we do interventional uh, radiology? Would we do the uh, interventional radiologist referral? Okay, so I don't have the images. I wish I had. Uh, the patient went for IR. They uh, did an angiogram, and they saw these small pseudoaneurysms. Wait, these small pseudoaneurysms. There were no active flush. However, because the patient was dropping hemoglobin, they did embolization for with coil, coil embolization of these small pseudoaneurysms. After that, the hematoma subsided on uh, follow-up, and the patient was fine after delivery. Okay, 